Cosmetics have been around for thousands of years, from the coal liner used by ancient Egyptian men and women, to the mattifying, acne-fighting primers on the market today. But what's actually in these products, and how do they work? Let's start off with lotions and creams, which are both good examples of something called an emulsion. See, some of the main ingredients in a lotion are water and oil, and these things don't normally mix. If you have a container of water and oil and shake it up, it'll create a dispersion, but as soon as you stop shaking, the water and oil will separate. But we don't see that kind of separation in a lotion. And that, my friends, is thanks to something called an emulsifier. Basically, this keeps small droplets of one of the liquids dispersed in the other, like small droplets of oil dispersed in water. And this works because of the emulsifier molecule's structure, where one end is hydrophilic or water-loving, and the other end is lipophilic or oil-loving. The molecules position themselves at the barrier between the water and oil, and by reducing the surface tension of the water, they keep the two emissible liquids together. Hence why when you use a lotion, it's not just oil and water flying all over the place. And also, bonus fun fact for you: if you've ever wondered why eggs are used in a lot of different baking recipes, it's largely because of the emulsifier that's found in their yolk. But also, let's be real, eggs are super delicious. Now speaking of keeping things together, beeswax and plant waxes are also used in some makeup products to keep that emulsion from separating. And it also thickens the oil in the makeup product, which helps give lipsticks its texture, and also its handy ability of not melting super easily, which is definitely a plus. Other ingredients can also be used to thicken certain cosmetics as well. For example, hydroxyethyl cellulose is a sugar-based polymer that's derived from cellulose, the stuff that makes up plant cell walls. And when they're used in cosmetics, they absorb water and swell, thickening the product. But now let's talk about what's arguably the best part of makeup the color created by the pigments. Typically, these pigments are broken down into two different types, organic and inorganic. Organic pigments are carbon-based molecules and are typically brighter than inorganic pigments, which are usually metal oxides like iron oxide and titanium dioxide. But there's also a much creepier type of pigment out there, and it's made of bugs. Yep, you heard me correctly. And some of your favorite red lipsticks are crushed up cochineal bugs. The color is called carmine red, and I will never be able to look at it the same. Now these are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to cosmetics ingredients. There's also preservatives, which keep the product free of bacteria and fungi, emollients, which soften your skin by preventing water loss, and many, many more. Cosmetics are basically like an artistic chemistry experiment that you can put all over your face and body. So let me know what you guys think about this. Are you surprised that cosmetics were so complex? And also, if you wear makeup, are you going to keep wearing Carmine Red lipsticks? Let me know in the comments below along with any other future topics that you want me to talk about. <laughs>